In this video, I'll show you how you can make different sprites react to signals. So a quiet doorbell only affects this one, and a loud one affects both of them, and the third one says my ears. So let's go. All right, I have a blank project. Let's start by importing the images that we want to use. You can feel free to use them too, link below. First, let's create a 2D scene. This is going to be our main scene. Now let's make the doorbell. So this is going to be a button. Let's attach the three sprites. So click on main and attach a sprite 2D. Drag the red image onto there. I'll name that red. And now duplicate it. The shortcut is Control D, or you can use duplicate here. This one is going to be green. Drag that image and blue. Let's rename the button to doorbell. Now let's attach a script. I'll use that default name and location. Now if it's not already selected, click the doorbell. Go to the node tab and you can double click the pressed signal. We want to attach it to the doorbell button itself and we can say connect. This is the most basic type of signal, it's a built-in one, but we want other nodes to react to this doorbell. Whenever you make a project using signals, you want to think about does the node that's emitting the signal need to know about the other ones or vice versa, or do they care about each other? For example, I could say here, like get a reference to this red node, but that's bad. If I add a second doorbell, then I would have to have the same code there. The actions of these guys should be independent of the doorbell itself. They should have their own script. So let's add that. On red, let's attach a script. I'll call it red. On green, I'll attach a script. And on blue, let's attach a script. Let's start with the red script. In the red script, let's add a function called react to doorbell. For this action, let's just say that their position moves up by 100. We can say position.y minus equals 100, because remember, negative y is the up direction when working with Godot. Let's go back to the doorbell script. Remember, the doorbell doesn't care who's reacting, so instead it can just emit a signal that we rang the doorbell. One way that we can handle this, we can use a global script. On your res folder, right-click, create new script. I'm going to name this globals, and we can create that. Now go in your project settings, so project, project settings, auto load, and now select that global script. Make sure to click Add. And notice it has capital G here, but it's lowercase here. That was automatic. Let's press Close. And now double click your global script. We can create our doorbell signal in here. To do that, we can say Signal Doorbell Ring. And we can put parentheses after that, though it's optional. This can help to tell us later what arguments this accepts. For right now, let's leave that empty. By making this signal in a global, we don't have to worry about getting references to different nodes. Let's hook up this signal in our script. First, let's go to the doorbell. We have the onPressed function that we set up. Inside of there, we can say globals.doorbellRing.emit. This is like an alert to everybody, like, hey, the doorbell just rang. It's up to each person if they want to do something about that. Inside of our red script, in the ready section, let's run our react to doorbell when the doorbell is ring. To do that, we can say globals.doorbellRing. So it's the name of our signal. To run this function when that signal activates, after the name of the signal, we can say dot .connect. You can see this takes a callable, that just means a function that doesn't have its arguments provided yet. So the name of the function that I want to run is react to doorbell. And there's no quotes here and no parentheses. It's just the name of the function. Let's run the game. I'll select the current scene and save it. If we ring the doorbell, you can see red does react. That's good. I'm going to go ahead and add a label to this doorbell and increase the font size. There we go. Let's go back into the red script. We can copy the ready and react to doorbell sections. We can use similar code in blue and green. Of course, you would maybe want to create a class for this, but just for this example, I'm not going to do that. Let's copy this into green for now. For green, instead of changing our y position, let's change our scale. To do that, we can say scale times equals 0.5. This just takes what our value was before and multiplies by 0.5. Let's run the game now. If I ring the doorbell, you can see they both reacted. But what if we want to say how loud the doorbell was? We can add that too. Let's go back to the globals script. In those parentheses, we can say we're passing in a loudness value. To give ourselves a hint, we can use colon int, because this is going to be an int value. This value is going to be passed every place that we call a function with the signal. Let's go back into green. We are passing a loudness value. If we try to run this now, you can see we get an error on green because it expects this loudness value, but we didn't provide one when we rang the doorbell. So back in the doorbell script, when we emit the signal, we have to say how loud this doorbell was. I'm just using an arbitrary scale here. Let's say it had a loudness value of 10. If we try running the game now, Green works, but red does not, so we need to adjust for the loudness in red. 
Back in the red script, when we react to the doorbell, let's pass the loudness. Let's say that red is a bit tougher here, and he only reacts when the loudness is above 15. So we can say if loudness is greater than 15, then we move upwards. If we run the game now, you can see green reacts, but red does not. This is because the loudness in our doorbell script, we said it was 10. Let's instead make another doorbell here. Let's duplicate this doorbell node, move it over. You'll notice these both have the same doorbell script. Since all of the code in each of our doorbells is going to be the same except for how loud they are, we can use an export variable for that. Let's enter one of those, it doesn't matter which one, because they're the same. At the top, we can say at export var loudness. This is how loud this doorbell is. We can say colon int. Let's use this loudness when we ring the doorbell. So instead of just the random number 10, we can say loudness. But we need to set that in the node inspector. Go back to one of those doorbells. You can see we have a loudness value that we can set. So I'll make that first one still be 10, but this second doorbell, I'm going to make this 25 really loud. If I run the game now, I ring the quiet doorbell, only green reacts. If I ring the loud one, then you can see they both reacted. Inside of blue, I can show one more trick. Currently, he doesn't react to anything. Let's fix that. Let's say that I have a function that incorporates the value of the doorbell loudness, but it also needs some other arguments. Let's call this func talk based on loudness. Let's first pass the loudness value. Then we can also have what to say. This one is going to be a string value, and we can also add the type for loudness. Let's check if loudness was greater than 15, then we can print what to say. This could probably just be done with an if statement, but just for this example, I'll show how you can use this with the doorbell. Remember, we want to connect to our doorbell signal. That was from globals.doorbellring.connect. I'm going to pass talk based on loudness. So when we connect this doorbell ring, remember that passes the int value of loudness. But if I go back, we need a second argument here. You might ask how we can pass that in. To do that, you can use dot bind. With this, we can pass in the arguments we want to use after this initial one is passed in, because this has to be a function without arguments. For example, we can say my ears. Let's run this now. Remember, if we use the quiet one, he's not affected, but the loud one, he prints out my ears. This might seem a little weird. This is just the syntax. It's passing the loudness first, and then after that, we bind values that come after the initial one that the signal passes. Remember, depending on your situation, this way that we set this up might not be the best way. You could also use node groups if you wanted, and signal to those, or classes, or a ton of different things. This is just one way you can use signals. If you have questions, you can ask below or join the Discord. Other than that, thanks for watching.